All right, so to start the year off, we are going to do some Algebra 1 review. Um, so to start with, we need to know some of our basic definitions. So I'm going to start with an expression. So this is something with no equal sign. And it's going to have numbers and letters, so it could be something like 2x plus 5, um, or it could simply just be a number, so like 7, or our equation could be even more complicated, um, x squared plus 3x minus 2. So those are all examples of expressions. Now, when we're talking about equation, this is going to have an equal sign. Okay. And it's when we set expressions equal to each other that we get an equation. Um, so for example, I could have that 2x plus 5, and if I set it equal to 7, I now have an equation. So anytime we're setting expressions equal, that's how we get equations. And remember for equations, um, this is something that we solve. And for expressions, we simplify. And we'll talk more about the difference between those two words here in a second. Now within our equations and expressions, we have other important definitions. So a coefficient is a number with a variable. A number with a variable. Um, so for example, if I had the um, equation of this 2x plus 5 equals 7, the 2 is going to be a coefficient because it's paired with a variable. Whereas a constant is a number on its own. So a number on its own. So again, going back to this example, 5 would be considered a constant because it's not paired with a variable, and 7 would also be considered a constant because it doesn't have a variable. Okay. And I keep using that word variable. So a variable, we tend to, to think of it as a letter, so x is really popular for that. Um, but really, a variable is a placeholder. Okay, so a placeholder. Uh, and it's going to represent a number, or it could also represent an expression. So it's going to depend on what we are told that variable is equal to. Um, so again, our most popular variables are x, y, z. Um, we could also use l, and I always do a cursive l so I don't confuse it with a 1. Um, m and n are also really popular variables that we're going to use. Uh, same thing with f and g. And if you notice how I'm using all lowercase letters, um, it's because in math when we start using capital letters, that brings in a different meaning. So usually when we're talking about variables, we want them to be lowercase. Not all the time, just most of the time. Um, some of the other popular ones, if we're getting into our Greek alphabet, are alpha, beta, and gamma. Oh gosh, gamma, there we go. Um, but again, we can use any symbol that we want for a variable. So you can use a heart, smiley face, whatever you want, as long as you define it. And then within our expressions, uh, we also have a term. Um, so I'm going to start with an example for this one. So let's say I had 3x plus 5y plus 7. Okay. Um, and I'm going to add minus 4z. Okay. So when I'm looking at this, a term is going to be separated by a plus or minus symbol. Okay, so separated by the plus or minus symbols. Okay, so 3x is a term, 5y is a term, 7 is a term, and this negative 4z is a term. All right, so let's keep going here. So this is, again, just kind of another example of how all of those things are related. So when we're looking at this because of the equal sign, this whole thing we call the equation, each side is an expression, 
And then within those expressions, we can have a combination of the coefficients, the constants, and variables. Um, so here we have two terms on this side of the expression. 5 is a coefficient because it's paired with a variable. x is the variable. And then since 7 doesn't have a variable, we would call that a constant. And then on this side of our equation, we would have one term. And we would call it a constant uh, because it doesn't have a variable with it. Now, as we start getting into simplifying and solving, we are going to need to use our order of operations. Um, so we usually call it PEMDAS. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about this one because that's what you have been told for a long time now when we started solving equations. So P is for our grouping symbols. Now, we usually say parentheses, but now that we're in Algebra 2, we're going to expand on what those grouping symbols are. Next, we have exponents. And then we have to do multiplication and division at the same time from left to right. So that's what this step is. So most people forget that. It doesn't mean multiply everything and then divide. We have to do it at the same time from left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction. That is done at the same time from left to right. Um, so I'm going to introduce a new way to remember this, and you don't have to use it. I just want to make sure you're, it's, you're aware of it, and it's becoming more popular. So if you decide to Google it, um, you'll probably find some information on it. Um, but the other one that we can use is called Gemma. Okay. So grouping symbol, exponent, multiplication, addition. Now the reason why we're getting rid of the division and subtraction is because division can be rewritten as a form of multiplication. Same with subtraction. Subtraction can be rewritten as a form of addition. So this is just another way to remember it, where you are making sure that we're doing the multiplication division at the same time from left to right, and then all the addition at the same time. Okay. Um, now for our grouping symbols, our most popular one are the parentheses. We could also have these curly brackets as a grouping symbol, or just the solid brackets. Um, other grouping symbols that we are going to see is the square root symbol. Okay, so anything underneath the square root is considered grouped together. Um, same thing, absolute value symbol. So anything within those absolute value bars um, needs to be considered together as its own group. And the last one that we don't necessarily think about is our fraction bar. Okay. So the top, we don't write it, but there is an invisible parentheses around the top and an invisible pair of parentheses around the bottom. So anytime we're dealing with fractions, the numerator is considered its own group and the denominator is considered its own group. And remember, this fraction bar means to divide. Okay, so it's very important that we're remembering all of those things as we're talking about order of operations. Okay. Now the other thing with order of operations, um, so off to the side here, I'm just going to rewrite PEMDAS since that's what we're used to. Oh gosh, M. Sorry guys. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay. So when we are simplifying, we go this direction. Okay. When we are solving, we are undoing the order of operations, so we have to go through the process backwards. So that's another important thing to remember when we start getting into the simplifying and solving part. Um, also along with our order of operations, we have distributing. Um, so distributing can look like a lot of things. Uh, most of the time we're going to see it as a number or a variable on the outside. Um, let's say we have 4x plus 2. So that just means that we're multiplying it in to whatever's inside of our grouping symbol. So this would be uh, 12x plus 6. Okay. Could be longer. Um, let's say I had negative 2 times x minus 3y plus 1. 
So again, I'm distributing that to everything. So this would give me negative 2x plus 6y minus 2. Um, and we are also allowed to see it on the other side. So it doesn't happen very often, um, but sometimes as we're working through our work, we tend to write it on the right side instead of the left side. So if you do see it like this, where I have that 4x plus 2, and I put the 3 on this side, it's still distributing. So we're still just multiplying it into whatever's inside of the parentheses. So this becomes that 12x plus 6 again. So it does not matter what side we are on for that. Um, and then squaring numbers, this is another really important thing that we need to talk about because a lot of people forget our basic rules for things. So if I have 2 squared, and anytime we're talking about an exponent, whatever this exponent is, it means that we are multiplying this term by itself this number of times. So this really means 2 times 2, which gives me 4. Um, and let's say I have negative 2 squared. And I'm putting that in a grouping symbol for a reason because I have said that negative 2 is together. So I'm really taking negative 2 times negative 2 to get positive 4. Now if I don't have this in a grouping symbol, so if I just write negative 2 squared, we have to remember that when there's a negative out here, this always represents a negative 1. Um, so as kind of a side note, if I have negative x, this really means negative 1 times x. So when we're dealing with numbers, it's the exact same idea. So this really means negative 1 times 2 squared. So I have to take negative 1 times 2 times 2, which is going to give me negative 4. So it's important that we are paying attention to those grouping symbols. Um, now I can also put a double negative. So let's say I had a negative and I'm going to use a, my parentheses and negative 2 squared again. Okay, well, this one means negative 1 times this group squared. So really, I'm taking negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 2. So that is going to give me a negative 4 again. Okay. So again, those grouping symbols, order of operations, really matter. Now, with squaring, I was squaring a single term. When we have multiple terms, so let's say I had x plus 2 squared, I'm not allowed to distribute my exponent in when there's addition and subtraction. Okay, so this means x plus 2 times x plus 2. So I have to FOIL that to simplify. So I'm taking x times everything in that second group. Um, so this will give me <clears throat> x squared and then plus 2x. And then I go to my next term and I have to multiply to everything in that second group again. So plus another 2x plus 4, and then we combine any like terms if there is any. Okay. So again, if I have this x plus 2 squared, it does not equal x squared plus 4. Okay, this is always wrong. Okay, so you cannot do this. Now, if we have it with just multiplication, so let's say I wrote this as 2x squared. So this means 2x times 2x. So 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared. So when it looks like this without addition and subtraction, that's when we're allowed to distribute this to each piece. And we are going to go over more exponent rules later in the year. Um, but for right now, we should know the difference between these two things. Okay, so again, that's going to be really important when we start solving and simplifying with our order of operations.